Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. You are most welcome here. I was in a local Dollar Tree today and I found these. They're made of metal. I love the motif. I bought several in black and several in white, and I can think of a few different craft projects that I'd like to make with them. So let's go have some fun. The first project with the screens is probably the most obvious, and that's to make a triptych out of them. And I thought I would use felt to glue them together on the back, but I wasn't sure what glue would work best. So I tried both E6000 and wood glue, and here I have Gorilla wood glue, and I just cut a strip of felt that would fit between the two panels, the straight part on the back. And then I used the Gorilla wood glue at the top and the E6000 at the bottom, and I let that cure overnight. And the next day when I checked it, both glues seemed to work equally well. So I decided to use the Gorilla wood glue simply because it's less toxic than the E6000. So I cut another strip and I glued the other side, this time with the wood glue. Now I didn't attach anything to the bottom. This stands up perfectly fine with just the three panels, as long as you skew them a little bit when you stand them up but you could put little blocks of wood around the bottom if you wanted to. Again, I did not find that necessary at all. And I like the screen this way. I like simple things, but I thought it would be fun to try something a little different. So here I have one of the clear chopping mats from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use one mat, and I'm going to place it behind the top panel, the arched panel, for two of the screens, the two screens on the outside. So I just traced that top panel onto a piece of scrap paper so I could see where the openings were, and then I laid the sheet over that. Now I also have this ornament from the Dollar Tree, and it's gold with a gold piece on top of it, and then a, I'm gonna call it a faux pas, a faux topaz, and I'm not too sure about the faux topaz. Now it's just glued together, so I'm using my hot glue gun to melt that glue a little bit, and then I was able to pull that middle piece out, and I wasn't sure if I would reuse that or not. Now I thought I would paint this in a couple of shades of blue, but of course you should paint according to your decor. So I have two blue paints here. This first one is Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in Cascade and the second one is Craftsmart Acrylic Paint in Muted Aqua. And I wasn't sure if the chalk paint would work well for this application, but both of these paints I felt worked equally well. So I just put them on my paper just to see how the colors looked. They look really similar, but the chalk paint is just a slightly greener and slightly darker blue. So what I'm going to do is first paint this ornament with the chalk paint. And that could definitely take two coats. This chalk paint is one of the paints that I use when I'm doing a patina finish, and I liked the look of one coat where you could see a little bit of that gold through. The gold is very bright and um, not very attractive, but covered with the chalk paint with just a little bit shining through, I liked the way it looked. You might prefer to cover it with more than one coat. Now with that painted, I just took my cutting mat and I put it over my outline and I painted the top panel with the chalk paint and I painted the two bottom panels with the acrylic paint and I did that twice. So I just flipped it around and did another set with the same colors in the same configuration. Plaid has a product called Gallery Glass, which is for making faux stained glass and I first used the product I would say about 25 years ago, I put it on a window, not the colored gallery glass, but just the clear gallery glass to give it a texture. And it is still on the window. It's a very good product and I will show it to you in an upcoming video. But gallery glass smells a lot like gloss Mod Podge. So I wonder if there are some of the same ingredients in there. And I didn't want to use a new product in this craft. So I'm going to use gloss Mod Podge as a sort of gallery glass. Now gallery glass comes in colors. I did try mixing paint with the gloss Mod Podge, but it lost some of the ability to give a texture. So that's why I'm going to use gloss Mod Podge over the painted areas to give a little bit of texture to them. When, when I painted 
you could see some brush strokes and I'm not sure if there's a way to paint so that there are no brush strokes. Um, so if you did want a smooth surface, then you wouldn't want to add the gloss Mod Podge, but you would have to achieve that with your paint. So what I did is I put down some of the gloss Mod Podge and then I'm just using a piece of a kitchen sponge to dab in it and give it some texture. And I just worked it until I had a texture that I thought looked okay. And I did that for all of my little painted sections and then I waited for it to dry. Now the Mod Podge is mostly dry and I really didn't like that faux pas, so I'm just going to use a faux pearl. I feel like faux pearls look more like real pearls than most fake gems look like real gems. And I'm just going to hot glue that in the center of the little ornament, and then I'm going to cut out around my stained glass. And I'm going to hot glue that into the two frames on the outside. Now I cut the first piece a little bit too long, so I trimmed that with an X-Acto knife. That wasn't very easy, so I'd say wait for your Mod Podge to dry, and then you can lay it down and get the size exactly right. So I did that on both sides, and then I just used a little bit of black florist wire, which I got in the floral section at the Dollar Tree, to attach the ornament to the middle panel. And here's how the screen looks just plain, and I really love this, and that was a really quick and easy craft. But here's how it looks with the faux stained glass and the ornament in the middle. Now for our second craft, I'm going to do something a little utilitarian, and I have these little, they're called loop hooks by Jot, so this is part of that organizer system that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And I got three hooks in one package, and I just took them outside and painted them with some white spray paint. And now I have this little shadow box sign. This one I happened to buy in the autumn, but I know that they have them available for most seasons, just with something different inside. So I'm going to remove both the little hanger on the back, and I'm going to remove the little three-dimensional sign from the inside. And then I'm just going to cut a piece of paper the size of the inside so that I have a template and I'm going to use that to cut a piece of this adhesive cork backing that you can get from the Dollar Tree. But I didn't bother um, adhering it in there, I just made sure it was a good fit and then it just fit nicely into the bottom. Now I'm going to use one of the white screens here, and I'm going to use wood glue and some staples to attach it to the back of this little tray. Well, it, now it's a tray. It was a shadow box. And it's really a perfect size. And then I'm going to attach the little hooks. They fit nicely into that screen. And I have a little organizer. Here's what it looks like. For the final project, I wanted to make a lantern out of four of the screens, and I'm going to use the white screens for this. And so what I first did was just wire them together, and this is just a temporary solution so that I could bend the tops in and get them to reasonably fit together. It's a little bit awkward um, to do this. They're, they're not a perfect fit, but they bend in quite a lot and fit together nicely. They don't bend nicely all the way together at the top, but they bend pretty well. But um, they're very, very pliable. They're very easy to bend. So you want to make sure that you're doing it slowly and gently and getting those uh, bends neat and you don't want it to buckle. Now this was just a really fortuitous find. This is a square plaque and I got this at Joanne Fabrics and the size you can see is six and three quarter inches square. This is 
almost the perfect size for our lantern. So you can see that I can basically fit the lantern over the top of the plaque with the bottom showing through. So it's it's got like a little um, detail along it so that it's got a slightly raised part and the lantern is just a little bit too small to fit over that. So we are going to work with that because it's just such a close fit and you could I suppose sand down that inner part so that it was a perfect fit but I didn't want to do anything super complicated I really thought I could make it work the way it is so we're gonna work with that so I sanded the plaque first just lightly and I don't show that here and then cleaned it off and what I have here is some acrylic burnt umber paint with a tiny bit of black added in and I'm going to take a little bit of that and then add a lot of water so I have something like a stain and then I just stained the plaque with that mix. I then took it outside and gave it about four or five coats of a satin spray finish. Now I felt like this was a great find. I got these at Walmart in the camping section and they're 32 inch bamboo skewers and I thought for the times that you want a really long thin stick that these were really handy. So I'm going to use these to attach the screens together into this lantern shape. So I undid the wire and then started with the first two and we discovered before that the wood glue works just fine on these screens. So I cut the pieces and then starting with the first two glued it between the two pieces. Now I glued it standing up because obviously I want the bottom to be level and I used my little cutting mat there to make sure that I had a right angle and then I just taped it and used the wire to wire it together while it dried. Then I did the same thing with the second corner. So I let them dry in between and again, just did it on my cutting mat so that this would be level. Now with the three pieces done, at this point, I fit it around the base to make sure it was fitting. And then this was a good point to paint those skewers white because I'm not going to be able to easily reach inside the lantern after this point and I painted the last two white as well. Once those had dried, I fixed them to the sides of the last piece. And then the final step is to put the lantern together. So I'm going to glue them to the three sides that I've already glued together. And I did this on the base because again, the base is just a tiny bit wider than the pieces together. So I wanted to make sure it would fit. And the only thing to be very careful of here is to make sure the glue doesn't seep down onto the base because you want to be able to remove the lantern so you can put something inside. And I put a few LED candles inside mine and here it is. I apologize for any wobbles. I wanted you to see the candles flickering so I have a video here. So what did you think of our screen projects? Did you have a favorite? Please tell me in the comments. I think that my favorite was the lantern. I really love the metal with the rustic wood, but I'd love to know your opinion. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That tells me that you enjoy this sort of content and I should bring you more. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.